Welcome to Beer Stars from Beer Star Brewhouse. When you brew the great beer, it's really the worst thing that could happen if it just spills all over the place or even the bottle explodes and stuff like that. So this video is about uh, how to avoid bottle bombs and how to avoid overcarbonating your beer. I've only had one beer that was overcarbonated. It was actually the second beer I brewed, I think. Um, but it, it was just, yeah, I could just keep them in the fridge and then it wasn't really a problem. But I've had plenty of beers from uh, other home brewers. Actually, I, <laughs> I still have one beer in my, uh, in my ceiling in my kitchen because when I opened that, it just exploded and everything was in the ceiling. Um, so I still have one up in the ceiling, actually. But it's just really annoying and and yeah, so I thought I would make these, uh, this guide to how to avoid uh, overcarbonating your beer. And it's actually really simple. Clean and sanitize all your equipment really, really good. Infections can lead to overcarbonated beer. So keep everything sanitized and clean um, and yeah, you should be good to go. But actually, the one thing I read about the most is that people don't let the beer finish. The recipe says it has to ferment five or seven days, and then they bottle after five or seven days. It's not done yet. And that would just make you, there will be sugar left in the beer that will still uh, ferment, and then you add sugar, and there you created a bottle bomb. Um, you can see a video in the end that will guide you to when your beer is done fermenting. So yeah, and that's really, really important. Let your beer ferment all the way out. It's not done just because uh, it stops bubbling up here. That's the main reason for bubble bumps. So keep everything sanitized, let it ferment. And the last part is, uh, yeah, of course, oh yeah, the right sugar amount. When I when I bottle my beer, I use uh, six grams per liter of sh table sugar. Uh, table sugar won't give any off flavors, like some people say it will give apple flavor and stuff like that. It won't, trust me. Dextrose is fine, table sugar is just as fine, even to brew with. Yeah, so I use uh, six grams per liter. In Denmark anyway, we have these sugar cubes. I use one and a half of these. I just take a sanitized uh, knife and cut them in half, add them directly into the bottle and put the beer, tap it uh, onto the sugar. And that's the correct amount every time. Every time it will be perfect when I do it this way. If you have a, a carbonating bucket that you fill with sugar and put your beer on top, you can create layers, you will oxidize your beer, you will risk infection. Um, so that can give uneven carbonation in your beers. If you make a sugar solution and add to your beer, you can still get an uneven amount. This seems very simple, but it's perfect every time. You can also get sugar drops that you can just uh, put in. Uh, they're a little more expensive than these. Um, so yeah, you have to put the right amount of sugar in, of course. But then you have to store it correct as well. It has to uh, carbonate at room temperature. And that's really important because if you do it too cold, it won't carbonate as well. If you do it too high, you can also, um, yeah, you'll also get a, get a bad carbonation. So leave it at room temperature for 14 days and then it will be perfect. If you follow these uh, four steps, disinfect, uh, the right sugar amount, let your beer finish, and uh, store at the correct temperature, you'll get perfect carbonation every time. There'll be a video up here where you can see uh, when your beer is done fermenting. Also remember to subscribe to the channel, uh, write to me if you have any questions, find me on Instagram and so on. Other than that, just have a happy brewing out there.